So when we talk about tillage, we, t we typically refer to our tillage events in two main categories, primary tillage and secondary tillage. We can have something that's called bed shaping or, or bed preparation, but, but most of the time when we talk about tillage, it's in either the primary or the secondary uh, section. So when we talk about primary tillage, there are goals specifically suited for primary tillage, and, and they can be very valuable to a production system. In primary tillage, we're talking about heavy inversion, a lot of soil mixing, heavy incorporation of a lot of the, the surface residue, which can be quite valuable depending on what your production system looks like. But, but the drawbacks are is that you are destructing a lot of your soil surface. If you've, if you've been working with some no-till or you've been trying to build organic matter, this can be quite destructive. You can actually see how destructive this, this primary tillage event can be. So what you have to do is, is try to figure out what your end goal is and kind of determine if primary tillage is well suited to match that end goal. Opposite of that, or, or maybe even not opposite of that, but in relationship to that, we have secondary tillage. Now, secondary tillage can be a little more flexible. You can use it to solely prepare a seed bed. If you have maybe a little bit of rough conditions and you want to just do a, a little bit of tillage before you plant, that's where secondary tillage can come in. The flexibility comes in that if you have done primary tillage, you, you typically can't plant into it. It's a little bit rougher. With secondary tillage, you can come in and really prepare a seed bed to do really nice planting. But it can also be used as the sole tillage event during the course of the year to where you just might need to smooth out the surface a little bit, maybe take out a little bit of low line spots or maybe some minor ruts and be used as your sole tillage event during the course of the year and be quite adequate. So we see that there's two different tillage events. They can be on somewhat opposite ends of the spectrum, but often they're complementary to each other. When we talk about primary tillage, our, our, our primary goal or the main goal of, of, of the primary tillage events is to do a high amount of mixing, a high amount of inversion of the soil surface, or potentially a high amount of incorporation of the residue into the soil system. So when we look at the actual, the actual benefits of primary tillage system, if we do have a high amount of weed populations, we can invert those into the soil system, potentially killing those or, or making them to where they essentially shade out underneath the soil. And, and help control a lot of our, our weed-based systems. The other thing is if we have problem areas of the field like ruts or maybe low-lying areas, that primary tillage event can help to maybe smooth out some of that or maybe break some of the crusting or, or compacted areas that we may have that are causing those events. So if we take a look at actually what the seed or the soil bed looks like after a primary tillage event, one of the telltale signs of primary tillage are these larger chunks of, of soil. These larger clods are, are a good indication that a, a seedbed has gone through a primary tillage event. What you're going to have is, is because it is more a coarse tillage event, it's, it's more of a, a coarse pass through the field, you're going to get a lot of these bigger ones. And the size is going to vary based on what piece of, uh, of equipment you're taking through the soil. If you're doing something like right here, we took a moldboard plow through the, through the soil surface. That's a very aggressive system, so we can actually get some, some quite large clods of soil. If you take something a little, a little less aggressive, these can be a little bit smaller, but also the environmental during tillage can influence what the soil bed looks like following a tillage event. But what we're typically going to see with, with, a, with a primary tillage is deeper incorporation, deeper inversion of soil. What you see here is most of this you, you can tell was, was subsoil or was below surface soil uh, when we, right before we did this tillage pass. And you can see now it's, it's part of our so surface soil. So remember, our primary tillage is all about inversion, incorporation of residue, and that, that heavy flipping or integration of the soil system. When we talk about secondary tillage, the primary goal of secondary tillage is to, st to start preparing the seedbed 
to, to plant into it. And, and that needs to be the overall goal when we start thinking about our secondary tillage and what secondary tillage implements we take through the field. One of the biggest things is to smooth the soil surface. If you have done a primary tillage event, you can remember what, how big some of those clods or those, those soil fragments were uh, after a primary tillage. They can be quite large. Those aren't really good for planting. But if we take a look at the seed bed following a secondary tillage event, what you see is it's, it's a lot smoother. It's prepared the seed bed a, a lot more for tillage or for, for planting excuse me but uh, what we have here is a secondary tillage event that occurred after a primary tillage event so we came through here actually with a disc we disked it up it's going to have a lot of those larger clods and then we came through with a secondary tillage implement and started to break a lot of those clods up and we see we still have a little bit larger of, of soil clods they can be somewhat larger in size but what this is trying to do is trying to minimize these but you can see they're a lot they're a lot smaller it's going to help break this up maybe one more secondary tillage pass through here would would be necessary before uh, before actually you go through and and come through with the planter but we see overall the rest of the soil surface is pretty smooth it's pretty nice it's it's got somewhat granular uh, nature to it so we could plant into a majority of this without an issue the telltale or a big thing with with secondary tillage is is that it is a little more flexible primary tillage you you can you can till but you have to typically take some sort of or some degree of secondary tillage after it to prepare the seed bed we can do secondary tillage after a primary tillage event but we can also use secondary tillage as the sole tillage event during the course of the year. And what we have is we actually have a spot right over here to where we did secondary tillage as the sole tillage event. And we see the clods that, that come from that are a little larger. It's a little dry up on the surface. So because you aren't integrating some of those more subsurface or, or more of those deeper levels of soil that maybe have a little bit moisture, uh, if, if you do these in really dry conditions, you can do a, a, a shattering that'll, that'll just create some of these larger clods. But we see the seed bed will, will come out essentially very similar. And so we have some flexibility with it. It all depends on what the seed bed looks like before and what our end goal is. With the secondary tillage, remember, we're, we're just doing some light incorporation. So if you have some fertilizers, some lime, or maybe even an herbicide you need to incorporate, that's the, a good thing for, for secondary tillage. Or if you would just want to incorporate some of that residue, that's a good thing for secondary tillage as well. Once again, it can be paired with primary tillage, but don't write off just using secondary tillage as the sole tillage event, depending on what your needs are.